who jumps out of perfectly good airplanes in the name of science, Mr. C. Well, where did that Easter break go? Um, but I've got good news for you and further good news and even more good news. The things that we were celebrating over Easter apply to us every day of the year because of the resurrection. We have all of those benefits that we celebrated <clears throat> on Easter, Easter Sunday. So geez, we're forgiven. So Jesus is alive. He's in us. His spirit is alive in us. He empowers us to live the way he wants to, wants us to every day. So we are guaranteed that we will live forever with him in heaven. He has given us a great purpose to serve him in his kingdom. All of these things apply every day. So it just blesses us every day. So anyway, it, so yeah, we get, we you know get a little more pumped up um, on Easter, the actual day, but we can be pumped up every day and should be because of all we have going for us. Now, more good news. First, though, I know men, this will be good news for many of you. Many of you dreamed over Easter break, and many of you couldn't wait um, to get this information. So here it is. So um, I know it'll really be really cool for you to have this information. I didn't get to wish you happy one of the month on the 1st because I was doing the um, April Fool, reverse April Fool's thing, I think that Mr. Philip did with you, just that, you know, I was, if I were in front of the class, I would have said, hey, I'm going to give you a study guide uh, to work with um, on the test, so it's open study guide test, and then I would have said, April Fool's, just kidding and you would have groaned, and then I would have said, reverse April Fools, I'm actually gonna give you the study guide, and I'll talk about the test in just a little bit. But um, if you'll do this, Mr. Philip has handed out to you some lesson summaries. Um, we're gonna highlight those, so you need a highlighter. So, not an option, you need a highlighter, so highlighter comes out, so we can highlight some information on the lesson summaries. And then also, <clears throat> pardon me, um, he has also handed out to you, it'll come to me, I guess it's all you need are the lessons, the lesson summaries. So we'll get to those in a little bit. But anyway, um, I um, on get it together, Mr. C. This is SRP Lake Levels. So if you'll stick these in your journal. And here's further good news. Since about December 1st, Roosevelt Lake has not changed much. 1% maybe, maybe a little bit more. And all the lakes, all the reservoir levels haven't changed much. So as of April 1st, Roosevelt Lake was 80% full, so you'll want to put 41 RL Roosevelt Lake, 80% full. It's good news. And then the total reservoir system, 76, 76%. Roosevelt Lake, 80%. And the total reservoir system, 76%. So it hasn't changed much since December 1st, so in four months. So that's good news. Well, what does that mean? We've been getting runoff and put back into the lakes. Now, it's been pretty warm already, but there's still some snow up in the high country that's going to put um, some water back, especially into the Salt River lakes on the east side, the east side lakes like Roosevelt Lake, Suara Lake, um, those lakes. Now, the bad news is the Verde watershed, the Verde River watershed, hasn't been good at all this year and last year. So it's, so it's low. So anyway, 
but the biggies are um, that Roosevelt Lake's 80 and the total reservoir system 76. So that is all good. And we're thankful for that. Thank you, Lord. I'm still holding out for one more big snowstorm in the high country. It could happen. It would be a bit of a rogue storm. It would be a little bit non-average. But uh, we got it last year, and let's pray this year. Lord, bring us one more big snowstorm uh, that'll just dump five more percent up in the high country. So anyway, we'll keep praying for that. Your journals are out, so you've already got your... Uh, lake levels in your journals. You've got a highlighter out, so and you've got your lesson summary, so you've got those. So and further good news: no test this week, no test this week. We've got a four-day week: Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So no test this week. We'll cover a number of things, and then uh, the test next week will be on Friday and it will cover all that we cover this week and next week. So anyway, you'll want to be reviewing every day, review, review, review. In fact, homework is to review the lesson summaries that we go over uh, today. Now, if you've got a test to make up, for instance, if you missed this test uh, before Easter break, you've got to make it up by Friday. So please get her done. So make it up. I think most of you probably have already got this. So, and again, it is open study guide. All right, here are the test answers. Further good news, I've graded a lot of the tests and the scores are good. Most are B's and A's, so lots of A's. So anyway, here are the answers to the test. Uh, John 1.3 was number one. All things were made by him, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. Number two, the historian Gary Habermas proved in his research that the facts of history absolutely show that the mm of Jesus is a fact. The resurrection, of course. The resurrection of Jesus for number two. Number three, in Colossians 1.17, it states that because of Jesus, all things hold together. So hold together. Number four, the 100 plus building blocks that Jesus made everything out of are elements. Number four, elements. Number five, the center of an atom is the nucleus. Number five, nucleus. Number six, the two subatomic particles found in the nucleus, protons and neutrons. The smallest part of an ele element is an atom. Number seven, atom. When two or more elements combine, you get um, an element plus element gives you a compound. Number eight, compound. Uh, number nine, the smallest part of a compound is a molecule. That was a happy, happy Easter freebie. Number 10, one of the best descriptions of an atom is that it resembles a cloud. Number 10, cloud. Number 11, when two things um, what two things are produced on the sun besides helium? So you couldn't use helium. Heat and light. So hydrogen, hydrogen, helium, heat, light. So, by the way, all of this will be on the final. And the good news is that you're going to have every lesson summary from here out. I'm going to give you a packet of them. By the way, don't lose these. If you lose these and have to have more, it's going to cost you five points. So don't lose them. I'm going to give you a packet right um, the, a week before finals of all your tests with the answers on them. So all tests. So the test for a third quarter, I think you had six or seven. I'll give you every one of those with the answers on them. You'll study those. And then this test will be part of that packet. So you'll study all those tests and then the lesson summaries as well. Okay, so number 11, heat and light. Number 12, N equals nitrogen. I gave you the symbols and it was a matching. Do you remember? And you had to match the name of the element with the symbol. 
So N, nitrogen, Fe, iron, C4, carbon, H4, hydrogen, He, helium, O for oxygen, O2, oxygen. Okay, 15, 19% of Earth's atmosphere is made of this gas, O2. 15, O2. The most abundant gas on the sun is H, hydrogen. I already did hydrogen, hydrogen, helium. So you've got to have lots of hydrogen to cause fusion to occur, fusion process. Okay, so uh, number 16, the most abundant gas on the sun, hydrogen, H. 78% of Earth's atmosphere is this gas, N, nitrogen. 18, our tissues are made mostly of C for carbon. 19, the secondary gas found on the sun, HE. HE, helium. This metal is very dense. The atoms are packed tight and it's hard and it combines with oxygen to make the compound iron oxide. Fe is the metal. 21, the two basic kinds of matter are leptons, electrons are a prime example, and quarks, and protons are a prime example. All right, backside, protons are smashed into each other in the LHC. What does that stand for? Large Hadron Collider another happy Easter freebie. I gave you three freebies out of the 40 points. Thank you, Mr. C. I hope you're grateful. 23. Why are protons smashed into each other to, to discover new particles or new subatomic particles? 24. Name two of the four fundamental forces that Jesus made everything out of. Gravity, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force that holds the protons together in the nucleus, and then the weak force that causes or allows the decay of elements and allows for fusion on the sun. So there they are, all four. Electromagnetic force, gravity, strong force, weak force. Number 25, the Higgs field is an invisible mysterious force. We still don't understand how it works. Jesus does because he made it. Anyway, they think, scientists, that um, the Higgs field gives particles their mass. There isn't any other answer. Mass. 26, the standard model is a chart of the fundamental particles. 26 particles. 27, because of the precise mathematical values of the fundamental particles, the fundamental forces, the precise mathematical values for masses, gravity, spacing of galaxies, stars, planets. What does this tell us? There's got to be a God. There's got to be a creator. That's what it tells us. 28, give one of the key fossil evidences. No tweeners, no ape men, and um, a um, a giant um, uh, flood, the great global flood. So 28. 29, give one bit of scientific data that show the, shows the earth isn't billions of years. Sedimentary layers are smooth. That's one of them. So um, they can't be that old. They would have been eroded. DNA found and also RBCs found in dinosaur bones. The comets keep coming back and others. Give one scientific law, the law of cause and effect, and biogenesis, or the law of life. 31, mutations are not a good mechanism for causing living things to change. They're rare, they're harmful, they can be fatal. Um, give one really good science evidence that argue, argues against the Big Bang, where the particles come from, why would they attract? Why is there rotation? Um, why would you end up getting things stopping it? The particles would keep going. So why would you get um, um, non-randomness, design, complexity? You wouldn't from just an explosion. I'll show you that in a minute, an example of that, a model of that in a minute. 
33, two divine designs God built into the gray whale. Sleek shape, so it can knife through the water. Baleen as a filter. Um, the uh, fins that act as a guidance system for it to send it in the right direction. Blubber to keep it warm or insulate it. And others besides. 34, magma, melted rock underground. So, magma, 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 lava, 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 lava outside, magma inside. 35 and 36, minerals have five properties, naturally occurring, um, inorganic, I gave you solid and inorganic, I gave you those two, unique chemicals, unique crystals, how tight atoms are packed, it's density, uh, kinds of rocks, S-I-M, S for sedimentary, I for igneous, M for metamorphic. And then extra credit, the Greek word panta in John 1.3 and Colossians 1.16 means all, every, everything. So there you have it. So I wanted you to see that. Now if you will look at LS1, we'll highlight some things in LS1. So get ready to highlight LS1. Okay, at the top of LS1, um, I'd like you to write in geology, just like I did. Geology, this is LS1, study of the earth. So we're going to try to get through LS1. I'm not sure we'll get through two. Probably not. So if you'll highlight geologists, the scientists who study the earth, geologists, they study rocks. Geology is not just the study of the rocks in the earth, but also uh, what the earth is made of. Um, and it also is a study of earthquakes and volcanoes, which we'll get to in a few weeks. There's a lot of volcanoes right now that are active around the Earth, way more than normal. It's interesting. Now, I'd like you to put this. It says here there are two ways that geologists know what it's like inside the Earth. One is rock samples. Geologists have drilled down really deep. I'd like you to put 7.5 miles. Do you see that? It says they've drilled down 12 kilometers. Oops, go that way. That's 7.5 miles. So the rocks that we've gotten from inside the earth and outside the earth, Tell us what it's like on the inside. Drilling tells, tells us what it's like on the inside. And then earthquake waves or seismic waves. You see this right here on the top? Earthquake waves or seismic waves. Highlight that. There's the top box, 7.5 miles or 12.3 kilometers. How do we know what the, what's like inside? We've drilled down. We get rocks from the inside, rock samples, and then seismic waves, earthquake waves. The earthquake waves go through different layers of the earth differently. They're slowed down or speeded up or bent. And you can know what that layer is like, whether it's liquid, magma, or whether it's solid, like the inner core. All right, the bottom box, I want you to highlight this on the bottom box. So get ready to highlight and write. All right, here we go. If you will first, uh, it talks about what it's like on the inside of the Earth. So you notice how I circled pressure and temperature. What's it like on the inside? Incredible pressure from the layers of rock above squeezing 
That's why the inner core is solid and not a liquid. So pressure and really hot, up to 10,000 degrees on the inside. You can write that down, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So pressure, bottom box, and heat. And then if you would highlight um, the layers of the earth over on this side, crust, mantle, outer core, inner core. If you'll highlight over here, highlight, find the layers, crust, highlight it, mantle, highlight it, outer core, highlight it, and inner core, highlight it. You might want to put by inner core, it's solid because of the pressure. I'll ask you. All of this will be on the next test again. So crust, mantle, outer core, inner core. And then over on this side right here, I want you to know this. I want to show you this. Okay, first, um, granite, I think I've, do I have some granite here? The rock around campus is granite, and the continental crust is made mostly of granite. You see that? Continental crust, granite. And then oceanic crust down at the bottom of the ocean is made of basalt. It's a kind of um, igneous rock. So you see that basalt? So did you highlight that? So basalt, oceanic crust, it's a dark rock, and then continental crust is granite. Did you get that? Now when you get a little break in a little bit, Mr. Philip will help you with those things. So he'll help you with that if you miss something. Okay. So we're just going to go through LS1 today. Now this is really going to be fun, so I want to show you this. So you have this sheet right here, Mr. Philip handed it out to you as well. This is really cool. There are 25 different minerals we're going to work with. Now I can't do it the normal way we usually did it when we divided up in groups and, and I had time to gather data on. Um, the different um, kinds of uh, properties of the minerals, like density, how tight the atoms are packed, or its hardness, like diamond. So anyway, but we're going to start working through this, and I'm going to tell you the names, and then I'm going to show you, um, I'd like to get at least two done today. So I'm trying for two, so I've got Minerals to show you. First, I did want to do this. This is a little bit of an aside, so I wanted to do this. This is a model or an example of something. So you've got to figure out what is it a model of. Pretty big balloon, huh? Okay, I wanted to show you this is a model of something. Now, what's this a model of? The Big Bang. Now, there are parts of this balloon that blew up and went different places. I can see one over there, one over there, one over there, and this one. Did they make com complex things? Nope. Was it non-random the way they spread out? Yep. Yep. So do explosions cause order? Nope. What do they cause? Chaos. Non-randomness. Disorder. And that's just what happened here. 
So a yeah, little example of the big how the Big Bang would have worked. And it wouldn't have formed things like it's claimed it would. And then all the other problems with it too, right? Anyway, no charge for that. Okay, I want to show you the first mineral. And if you look on the very back page, there's three pages to your rocks and minerals. So if you'll turn to the back page, this one right here is one of those. This is one of them on this page. Okay? Somewhere on this page is number one. Okay? Now you may not do this. But geologists sometimes, if they have a hypothesis about a rock, they'll do this. They'll, what's this? They'll taste it. You shouldn't, unless you're a geologist or a science teacher like me, and know what I'm working with. So, no, 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 you can't do this. It's for verboten. No, 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 not allowed. Okay, I warned you, don't even think about it. Okay? But this one is on this page and it is salty. Very salty. So what is it? So scan up and down. Put your thumb up when you think you found it. Mr. Philip will see your thumbs. And what is it? It's halite down at the bottom. H-A-L-I-T-E. So number one, you'll want to put one over halite. This first one is rock salt. Halite, number one. Okay. Woo wee, is it salty? I'm gonna have to get a drink of water. Okay. All right, number two. That's number one. All right. Number two. Where is it? Here it is. Number two. Now I have a beautiful. I have a beautiful sample of this. I bought this in Australia. I've showed it to you before, I think. This is a kind of quartz, but it's not just basic quartz. This is basic quartz. See this crystal right here? Isn't that gorgeous? This is the coolest crystal that I own of quartz right here. Beauteous. But this is a special kind of rock called purple quartz. So look up and down your pages, find purple quartz. By the way, all of these crystals are the same shape as this ordinary quartz crystal. Same shape, all the crystals. It's igneous rock. It was, it was um, at one time magma and it cooled. Cooled slowly to make big crystals like that in my purple quartz. Okay, did you find it? So... Mr. C, you've got to look yourself. Where is it? It's on this third page as well. Have you found it on the third page, page three? There it is, number two, amethyst. Amethyst. Purple quartz. And the Bible says it's going to be found in heaven. It says, if it's the same, that it'll, um, that one of the gates of the new heaven is going to be made of purple quartz. Look it up. You can read about it in Revelation. If it's the same thing as amethyst, which is purple quartz, um, if it's the same as earth amethyst, that's what it'll be like. Gorgeous. So, um, halite, number one, rock salt, and then number two, purple quartz, is amethyst. Okay, I am going to show you a little divine design video, just two minutes. So you're going to see it. Write down a few things in your journal under the Divine Design section. Mr. Philip will encourage that. On the human eye. It's on the human eye and it's Divine Designs. And then Mr. Philip will um, help you out if any questions need to be answered about what we've covered today. So Divine Design, Human Eye, and here we go. It's only two minutes. So, way you go. Thanks, Mr. Philip.